You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. This episode of the Sketchnote Army Podcast is brought to you by Neuland, the innovative maker of visual thinking tools. Every Neuland product is designed with passion to be durable and sustainable. Check out their newly redesigned Neuland Find One line of water-based refillable markers. The rich black permanent outliner and bullet and brush options. The crisp, fine lines and rich colors of the sketch line. The flowing, variable brushes and colors of the art line. Save 15% with code AMB290425 at Neuland.com until December 31st, 2020. And now on with the show. In this episode, I talk with Zena Gooding Broderick. While she's new to sketchnoting, she's full of energy and excitement for the craft. Zena runs a family funeral business in England. She's a speaker, a coach, and now she's gone gaga for sketchnoting. Hear how she came to sketchnoting and the lessons sketchnoters can learn from the funeral business. Hello, Zena. Welcome to the show. It's so good to have you with me today. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you. You're such a unique person and a unique guest, and I, I think people are going to really love hearing your perspective and your, your advice and just your thoughts. So first, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay, so I do a number of things. I am a funeral director. My family business is a funeral parlor, which I run with my husband and my sister. I am a charity chair. I am a professional speaker. I am an executive coach for ambitious mothers. But best of all, um, I'm a loving wife and mother, and I am here 100% to enjoy the experience of life. And that's me. Wow. I think that's, you know, just a few small things there. (laughs) That's great. I love hearing how diverse you are and how you've really fully expressed yourself in the things that you do. That's, That's exciting. So tell us a little bit about how you got into this sketchnoting, visual thinking stuff. Like, where, how did you stumble into this space? I would love to hear that story. Wow. Well, I definitely would use the term stumbled into because mm. um, in my coaching, I'm, I'm studying one of the, well, it's the highest level of coaching qualification, certainly in the UK. It's like master's level. Mm-hmm. And I was struggling with um, some of the concepts that I needed to get a hold of. I love learning tools and learning skills. I am a lifelong learner. So I was thinking, well, perhaps I'm not getting this because I'm not enjoying the process mm-hmm. enough. And that tends to be my attitude, generally speaking. And I'd, mind mapping wasn't really helping me with this mm. because I'm a right-handed. I find that I can draw the right-hand side of the mind map as well as I'd like, but the left-hand mm. side looks a hot mess. Interesting. And that always winds me up when I'm mind mapping. So I remembered a video that I'd watched 10 years ago. And this is so random. It's by a lady who is into natural hair. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm African Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Um, my hair type is quite distinctive. Mm-hmm. And there was a natural hair movement that started a few years ago. And I was a big part of that movement. This lady was breaking down hair growth but she was doing it in a really visual way. Mm. And she had a massive sheet of paper on the wall. Mm. And I thought, wow, look at what she's doing. She drew half a face and she had a a hair growing out of it. And she used words and images. Then halfway through the, the, the video presentation, she said, oh, and by the way, what I'm doing here is called graphic recording this is what I do full time. And aside from doing these videos on YouTube, I travel all over um, the country. She's American based Mm -hmm. and I do graphic recording. And I, I kid you not, I saw that video in 2010 and I was here in 2020 struggling with my masters and remembered that video and thought Mm. I need to be able to do notes like that. I went and found the video again Google graphic recording and graphic note taking and visual note taking and came across you. Oh boy. (laughs) And that was fantastic (laughs) because you had your video on YouTube. 
and as you know i guzzled down <laughs> your content and just couldn't get enough i was like i'll buy his book i'll take his video courses i'll, I'll do everything yep. <laughs> literally that's what happened did you and i started exchanging yeah. and that it was great yeah and that was wonderful for me that was really good for me and yeah that is a really long-winded way of explaining how I got hmm. into this wonderful, wonderful space. Isn't it the old adage, it's um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So in some sense, like you had seen that video 10 years before, and it stuck in your brain enough that when the time came that you hit the frustration level, you were reminded of it, and then you were ready to accept that teaching. And then it took, then you took off from there, right? You went deep and wide to learn more about this, yes. this concept, this idea but I think it was I think it was really helpful. It's interesting to see that it came in context to something you were passionate about, natural hair. And it came alongside of that. And then that interesting thing that you understood provided the passion or the the spark in your mind that, oh, this is a really interesting way to visualize what I'm thinking or what I want to explain. And then you could start to think, oh, how else could I apply that? So that's a very interesting yeah. story. So tell us now, so that's how you stumbled into it. How did that take form? You talk about guzzling in things, which I, you know, we had some great discussions and I directed you all over the place. Tell us how that story went. I've heard little highlights of it. I would love to hear more of the story from that point up until now, like what's been happening. Oh my goodness, Mike, I have been using sketchnoting for everything. So <laughs> Star of the show. Right then. So, um, because we are in lockdown here in the UK, I am homeschooling. Mm -hmm. I have been um, helping my son with visual stuff. I have um, done explainers with the Goldman Sachs thing. I, I, I'm part of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses program, and that has been happening during lockdown. Mm -hmm. And we will have one delegate from the business, which is me, who participates in the program. And then it's my responsibility to feed back the learning to my business partners mm -hmm. and then try and disseminate the learning throughout the, the business. I have been using sketch noting for that. In fact, during the time when um, I was on the program, I just thought, well, let me just try live sketch noting because I, I, I have to admit, I'm a, I'm quite intimidated by mm -hmm. the whole live sketch noting um, concept. So I practice it. I mm -hmm. understand the importance of practice. So I practiced it, um, and I did what you call is it the two two visit approach? Yeah, the, where two, you the two time. Yeah, you do uh, first. You do rough, and then you refine into a final state, kind of. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I did the two time approach um, and then I sent it off to the member of my cohort and said, oh, is does this cover what you were explaining to us earlier on in the class? And he's like, oh, my God, what is this? I've never <laughs> seen this before. This is amazing. So my head swole real huge. <laughs> um, but it was nice. It was nice to have been able to take in that information. Mm -hmm and then interpret it and then recreate that information and send it back to the person who said it and for him to say yeah that's that's it yeah. but like in pictures and words and this is really great so yeah i've used it with that um i actually did a sketch note on sketch noting mm -hmm. for some of my friends who were like yeah but i can't draw so that's not really mm -hmm. going to work for me mm -hmm. and i did a sketch note on the importance of information as opposed to the importance of art mm, yes where the emphasis lies mm -hmm. and was able to 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 send that to them and now they're into sketch noting too mm. i sent them your video as well the the youtube video mm -hmm. um yeah it's just like what haven't i used it for that would be the, the easier <laughs> question to answer doing a lot of high level planning because I, I I sort of went into the different things that I do and I do a wide variety of different things. A lot of them require strategic mm. level mm -hmm. thinking, um, managing my time. And also because I coach women who have fairly similar lifestyles mm -hmm. to me, I also have to set a good example. So rest has to be factored in there. And sketch noting I used as a relaxation mm -hmm. tool as well. 
So, you know, just practicing stick men over and over again, doing different things, practicing your sketches. Um, you know, you've got your grid in, in your book with the house and the dog mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. different things like that. So practicing that as a relaxation tool as well and being hmm. able to recommend that as a way to re- relax, doing drills as relaxation. So, yeah, I've just I've really taken sketch noting and I have run with it. It's just everywhere in my life now. I can see that. That's that's so exciting for me to see how well it's integrated into your life and that it's that it's helping you, right? It's one thing to have someone integrated into their life and to be crabby about it, right? That's that's not really the goal. <laughs> but to see that it's uh, not only is it being beneficial to you and helping you both to understand and also share, but that you're excited about it and you see the value. And that's always the trick, right? With sketchnoting, it seems like if you think of it logically – it feels like, um, why am I doing this extra work to understand? Why am I doing this extra work of drawing? I could just be writing notes. I could just be listening. Like there's all these excuses why you could be not doing it. So any kind of feedback that helps you see the value of doing it uh, is really valuable. And I think that's the place it sounds like you've gotten to, uh, which helps perpetuate it, right? If you see the value, you're going to do it. And then when you do it, you're going to see the value and then you know, the whole cycle just returns and comes back again. Definitely. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's so important to enjoy what you're doing. Um, You know, I'm a huge fan of being passionate about the things that you're doing. And if you're not enjoying it, think of ways to make it enjoying, enjoyable. And if you need to brainstorm or work that out, hey, use a sketch note to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, um, just, just, think about how to make things enjoyable and I've I've made this so enjoyable for myself. Mm. It sounds it sounds that way if you're talking about using it for relaxation and communication and and all these different ways you're using it to express yourself. I think in a lot of ways it's like it is really another language, right? It's uh we have words in spoken language, but having a visual language is helpful because on more than one occasion, I'm sure you've probably seen this Sometimes it's actually more effective to draw the idea than to try to explain it. Like explain it sometimes gets you twisted up in knots where drawing it yeah. out brings clarity, right? So it just it, it's like adding to your the language you have on a different dimension. And it makes, as the more you do it, the more fluent you become, just like with any language that you're learning or practicing. So that's really, really fascinating. I'm going to go in an interesting direction. And you know this is coming. Um, you're a funeral director. Um, yeah. you know, not a, not a profession that maybe many, uh, listeners, although I wouldn't presume to know who listens to the show, maybe are not funeral directors or the times that they encounter a funeral director, maybe are very sad because a good friend or family member has passed and you're just in a, you're in a state of grief, right? And whatever state that is. So you don't often notice or appreciate the work that a funeral director does, but we know that it's really important Talk to me a little bit about what being in that business has taught you about your sketchnoting, your approach, and oh. I guess in general life, right? Like what you must have unique perspective that we don't have being in that position that you could share with us that we could learn from. Okay. So I would have to say, first of all, I, by nature, I am I am an optimist. But aside from that, if being in my profession has taught me anything at all, it's that life is precious. I have evidence that people die every single day. Hmm. And for me, the highlight of that, what I take from that, rather than being depressed as some people assume I might be, no, no, I, I grab life with both hands and I focus on joy. I want to experience each and every single day. Um, I enjoy my family. My my little boy, when he comes into my room on a, on a morning, he get he literally gets a round of applause and a cheer, you know? And I'm like, why does he need to wait until he's a celebrity before he gets, you know, mm. he, he gets that kind of praise. My sons, my big sons get the same. My husband, he gets a, a cheer and a clap when he comes home. You know, I really do celebrate life. I celebrate people. I celebrate my experiences. I make them the best I can. And I, and I know that um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm driven to do this because tomorrow is not promised to me. 
And I'm reminded of that every single day. Hmm. And my way of, I wouldn't say combating it, but my way of accepting that is to make sure that I live a fulfilled life, a life with no regrets. So if I'm going to do anything I need to find a way to make it enjoyable because that is my purpose. I enjoy Hmm. my experiences and I enjoy my relationships to the full. And I believe that the constant reminder that I get in my profession has perhaps taken this from my natural optimism and converted that into a life's mission. Hmm. Um, not only to do this for myself, but to share this message, you know, enjoy your life, make, be accountable for the way you live your life. And, and that is, that is something that's really important to me. And and that comes, that speaks Hmm. through my service as a funeral director, how I deliver service, not only as a funeral director, but the way that I chair the charities that I chair, um, the way I devote myself to people and and to my tasks as well i i when i'm doing something i mean it Hmm. you know um there is no doubt when i have interactions with people they have they don't doubt how i feel about that interaction there's no there's no hmm i wonder if she enjoyed being on that podcast (laughs) (laughs) you know and and i i i really do believe this has um yes it's it's promoted me from being um, a simple optimistic person, you know, practicing simple op- optimism every day to it being my full on life's mission hmm. to really embracing life and showing people that it's possible. And and yeah, I would say that's that's how it's really hmm. fed into the way I do things. And that includes sketch noting. Hmm. That brings me to a question that I hadn't planned on, but it is um, it is this. If you have that level of intensity with everything, I suspect that energy has to be a challenge that you must, I suspect you must have to build in rest time for yourself and making sure that you don't burn yourself out because I could see where if you're really intense, I know the times when I've done intense work like writing books or what have you, protecting that sleep time has been huge because otherwise uh, eventually it's not sustainable. It, it can be, it can be unsustainable if you push it, right? Yeah. So, um, so I practice what I preach and I, I say, you know, joy, not overwhelm. So that means that rest is mandatory. It's not optional. Mm -hmm. It's not the thing that gets pushed to the bottom of the list of priorities. It's right up there at the top because I go for, and again, this is probably from the profession that I'm in, but I go for longevity. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I go for longevity and quality of longevity. So not just um, living half a life for a hundred years, but living your best life for a hundred years. But that doesn't mean um, being at full throttle. For me, that means having lions or I love my soaks in the bath with my bath salts Mm -hmm. um, and listening to real good music or meditation or just sitting down and and hugging my son, you know, because he's still young enough that he'll allow me to do that. Um, (laughs) I'm not sure anyone could stop you, (laughs) Zena. Yeah, so I I factor in rest and I I highly recommend that too. It's mandatory. Mm. Mandatory. Sounds like we had a we had a, an episode last season about self care that we could probably point back to for ways to think about it. It doesn't. It can be a variety of ways to care for yourself. So when you talk about you know taking a nice long soak in a bath with salts, that that could be a definite self care. That's really what it is, right? It's taking care of yourself so you have the ability to go long to outlast, yeah, and not to burn yourself out. So probably the last question I had for you around this topic was, how do you see a correlation between presentation and performance what are the parallels between being a funeral director because you're doing this every day to sketch noting okay so just to just to clarify i don't direct every day anymore i do more of the mm-hmm. strategic side of the business okay but um i i am lowering a co- literally lowering a coffin next wednesday so no two days look the same for me sometimes i direct sometimes i'm chauffeuring mm-hmm. sometimes i'm i'm working from home um I think the parallel for me has to be the importance of communication. Hmm. 
when I'm communicating with my clients or where any of my team are communicating with our clients, we have to go for clarity. We have to make sure that um, in their vulnerable state, because we acknowledge mm-hmm. that they are vulnerable, um, things may not be so clear to them. It's one of the reasons that we give them, um, we speak to them and give them things in writing and and reassure them that they do not need to commit our conversations to memory because believe me um being bereft is distracting having a huge void in your life where somebody very real used to be there and now is no longer there is distracting and can be all consuming so trying to remember facts and dates and numbers and forms you've got to film and what you what you've got to sign that's really hard to do in a bereft state. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to me that I communicate clearly and effectively with my client. Now in sketch noting, for me, it's about being able to communicate a point effectively. And I do sketch noting for church, which I forgot to mention. Um, Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I've been, I've literally, the, the minister said, oh yeah, please do share your sketch note if you do one this su- Sunday. And I was like, oh, there's no pressure there then. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I need to make sure that um, if the sketch note is going to be shared, and I, I, I'm not suggesting for a moment that that's mandatory, but I do recommend it. Um, mm. it so if a sketch note is going to be shared, drawing from my professional side, communication is key. I would like to know that the person who is reviewing, looking at the sketch note actually has a clue what I'm trying to communicate to them. (laughs) And and I think that is a very strong parallel. And I know um, it it is probably integral to me, not, not only as a funeral director, communicating with people who are vulnerable, but also as someone who coaches and someone who chairs, you know, chairs are bored. I've got to be clear. They have to understand Mm -hmm. what um, I'm saying. And I also need to understand what a bereft person is saying to me. And and if I'm using their language back to them, I need to make sure I get that language correct. Mm. So if they're saying to me, I don't know, I'm feeling really, I feel really angry all the time and I don't mm-hmm. even know why if I say yeah because it is quite sad what you're going through well they didn't say sad they said angry mm-hmm. and they are two different emotions and it's important that when I'm speaking to someone and they're speaking to me that they know they are being heard mm-hmm. and they are being understood I can't make a mistake in that it's really really mm-hmm. important mm-hmm. and when I'm sketch noting and taking in information it's important to me that even if I'm going to use a particular icon, I try and make sure that that icon reflects what that person's saying and their language and what they're using. So that if it's a a sketch note to be shared, that the recipient understands where the speaker was coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think those are parallels that I, I Mm -hmm. see from, you know, being a funeral director and coming from that side of, service and you know going into other areas of my life where service is really key and therefore communication is right up there at the top mm. of the list of priorities I've I've got I've really got to get it right especially if it's for sharing with somebody else if it's mm-hmm. not for sharing then it's not quite it's not as important more for you yeah yeah I mean I think if you think about it really if you bring it down to the to the base sketch noting if you share it uh, even if you even if you don't share it as a, you're serving someone, if you do it for yourself, you're serving yourself, your future self, let's say. But if you share it with other people, you're serving them too. You're you're taking a moment of your life. You're making sense of something that may be complex, or detailed, or unclear, and you're helping provide clarity. You're communicating, and then you're projecting that forward to who knows who. Right? It could be someone tomorrow, but it could be someone ten years later just like your video where that concept came from, right? We don't know. Once we release those sketch notes into the world, they sort of have their own life and they can impact people when we least expect it. So in every sketch note, there's a level of service, some micro level of service or 
macro level of service, I guess. So keeping that in mind is really valuable, I think. Yeah, I I, hmm. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Hmm. That's really fascinating. I, you know, coming into this discussion, I was so excited to talk to you a lot because you're in such an unusual field for most people who listen. And I, I always, that always attracts me because I think often we make the assumption, or maybe I make the assumption, that that's such a different space that, well, there, there probably couldn't be connections. But then the more I think of it, actually, that's, there's always these universal connections you can find if you dig deep enough. And I thought it would be really helpful because, you know, I think about myself when I've been in situations where in a funeral setting, my, my attitude is I try to be, you know, humble and listening, but you know, I've lost someone or, or I, you know, they're maybe not super close to me, but still, you know, everyone's mindset in that space is just different and it must be a real challenge. You must have to work very hard to make sure things are communicated, as you said, because people are in such varied states of being and you just, you know, someone might be sad, someone might be angry, someone might be despondent and you have to deal with all those things. That's just a really important part of life to provide that service. So thank you for doing that for the people that you serve because they probably don't uh, even realize sort of the service that you're doing and the value that that's bringing to them. It's helping them navigate through this difficult time and you being the expert, having done it before, provides this level of comfort and confidence. And the parallel there I see is, as sketch noters, if you start doing this for other people, coming in with that confidence and being able to show your work, and like you said with your teacher, in that setting where you're sharing the work back to them and they're excited, that is, that's the same kind of activity. So again, there's some parallels, I think, there as well. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thanks for the thanks, Mike. Um, yeah. I really appreciate that. I came into this profession through grief. I, I mm. certainly didn't go to school expecting to be a funeral director. My father died and then I, I um, mm. my sister and my my husband and I took over the business. So it wasn't, I just suppose my, my attitude toward, towards service um, has helped me considerably, yeah. but it is something that I take very, take very seriously. As, as happy and as jovial as a personality type as I have, I'm still very much focused on the service aspect. And, mm. and, um, and I know that you understand service because in my interactions with you, I have seen um, a correlation in the way that you, in your attitude towards your community, mm. the Sketch Notes Army, um, and the way that you engage with your, with your, <laughs> with your podcast guests and I'm laughing because that was another thing that I did a deep a deep dive into was just completely binge listening to all the podcasts. <laughs> I think you might be the well. only one <laughs> <laughs> no I love it love it was lis listening to it before I came on as well so um yeah thanks thanks for acknowledging that and thank you as well Mike for making this important tool so very very accessible when you could have been quite precious about it and quite aloof mm. about it. Um, I think that attitude of sharing is just going to make it if it isn't already. I mean, people like me are, um, are, are singing your praises and telling everybody about it and saying, you're really going to try this. And it's your attitude towards sharing that makes it easier to share. So thank you mm. for that too. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for the kind words and, that's the heart of all this. It doesn't help if um, if it's hidden away. It has to be. It has to be given away. So I'm glad that you've accepted the gift and you're running with it. It's exciting. I love seeing all the stuff you're doing and hearing your stories. So thank you. So I'm excited for for lots of different reasons to have a new sketch noter on the show. One of them is what are the tools that you've been discovering that you have found that you like and that work well for you. Right. Okay. So because I am. <laughs> Because I am nerdy, right? Awesome. And, Love it. And I kept hearing this paper meat flare, paper meat flare, paper meat flare <laughs> all the time. I was like, what is this paper meat flare? I'm going to have to. Well, clearly the voices in my head are forcing me into buying <laughs> mm -hmm. a paper meat flare. Um, so I got a pack of those and I've been playing with the paper meat flare pens. 
I've also been playing with um, some gel ink pens because I really mm-hmm. do love gel ink anyway. I do too. And I can't remember the brand, which is is really odd because I was using those same gel ink pens for years and years and years. Uh, mm. um, well, I have to say that I love um, I love pencil and mm. paper, but that it, but I have to be in a real particular frame of mind when i'm i'm hmm. drawing with ink right okay and i i am gonna go into the whole art in inverted commas side of sketch noting because i think it's a really important area to address yeah 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 i have to be in a certain mindset so i have to be ultra focused when i am doing the drawing bit with the inks mm-hmm. because almost in my mind i'm tracing an outline so Hmm. i'm sort of seeing an outline of where i want the pen to go and because i am not a natural artist and i'm not a particularly practiced artist so i've only only very recently been practicing art Hmm. and i Hmm. and i i will go into this more but i think the only difference between someone who is an artist and someone who isn't are two things the first one is whether they're practicing art or not if you're practicing it, then the likelihood is that you become an artist. The other thing is perception of what art must be, because to Tracy Emin, it's an unmade bed. Well, in that case, I'm an artist every single morning, (laughs) you know, so it's a, it's a perception of art. But so then going back to, to drawing with ink, I have to be really, really focused of trying to see the outline that I'm tracing in my mind, mm. Mm. right? So that I get it right. Um, because I do like things to be tidy. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do like things to be tidy. Uh, I do allow myself to be messy with sketch noting, but I have to tell myself that beforehand so that I don't <laughs> get annoyed with myself. Give yourself permission, yeah. Exactly. So that's with analogue um it's it's okay. the flair at the moment it's the, the which i've gotten specifically for that and just a, a rough notebook as well mm-hmm. um digital it's got to be my my beloved mac um my ipad pro and my apple pencil yes i absolutely adore them um Sketch noting. One of the things that I do is I journal every day, and mm-hmm. I use um, Adinkra symbols. Adinkra symbols originated from Ghana in West Africa. Oh, really? And I don't have, know about those. Oh, they're beautiful. They're really mm. beautiful, and each symbol means um, different things. We'll have to find a show a show note for that, so everyone can check those out. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll be happy to share one with you. So. Um, the viewers won't, the, the listeners won't be able to see this, but I'm, I'm now um, showing Mike the card for oh, yeah. interdependence. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what this symbol looks like. So you could, you could literally Google Adinkra cooperation and interdependence and the symbol will pop up. Hmm. So I shuffle these cards every morning and then I use the card to um, focus my journaling experience. Hmm. Interesting. And I will draw that symbol. So that's where the drawing aspect of my sketch noting journaling comes in. I will draw those mm-hmm. symbols. So it's really good for me to be able to do that on my iPad, keep everything in the right place because mm-hmm. um, I, I need to be able to go back and find things when I'm ready. Yeah. I love Note Shelf. I've tried okay. lots it's a great of tools. It, yeah, it's great. I, I've used lots of different types when figuring out which software I would use, which mm-hmm. app I would use. I went to a guy, um, I can't remember his name, but he's like into paperless living and he mm. he just he's a German, he speaks with a German accent and he's he just like tests lots of different apps for note taking for paperless note taping um, mm. note taking and i went through some of his videos a couple of years ago because i wanted i'm a bu- i'm a bullet journaler as well okay. and okay. i wanted to take it paperless because okay. i thought if i lose my bullet bullet journal i'll be absolutely stuffed i don't know what i would do without <laughs> it so 
note shelf I've chosen because it's backed up not only to the the note shelf app but it's also backed up to Evernote and mm. I can search Evernote for my handwriting. Oh so, wow, that's cool. Yeah, so for me that's really really handy. I've tried Procreate and I use Procreate mm -hmm. for the sketch notes I do for church. Okay. I'm trying concepts, but I'm a bit intimidated by the infinite canvas. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking things, some things might be huge. Some things might be tiny. Yeah. It, how, how do I save this and share it? So I'm getting into exploring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm exploring with that. Wow, that's that's a great. It sounds like you're in an exploration mode, and I, it's interesting that I do see some some variation. So I see many people like Procreate, which is a great tool. I personally like Paper by WeTransfer. Um, oh yeah, just historic reasons, and also, you know, I I've said this so many times. I just like that it's a little bit opinionated, and it feels probably the closest of any of the tools, at least that I've played with, to Paper, but it still has some of the drawing tools to it so that's it feels like you make a, a distinction when you talk about note-taking apps like they will have color and pens but it will be somewhat limited right which can be good so it really depends on how you're approaching it sounds like for you a notebook metaphor is better for the way you work yeah. uh, in your daily work right so you i think that's really healthy it always is, comes back to the tap what's the job that i want to do and then you find the tool that fits the job you want to do, right? That just makes Precisely. total logical sense. So um, that's really good that you're exploring because I find this myself, like there's times when if I'm being hired to do something, it's more likely I'll use the iPad simply because the client might come back or I might have a typo and I need to fix that. And it's much easier, just a much easier process. But I also try to maintain some analog work because I love the feel of pen and pencil on paper. So I don't want to lose that. And there's certain applications where that's actually better for me. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of finding the right tools to suit your, your needs. And it sounds like that's where you're, that's where you're going, which yeah. is really great. That, that's really interesting, Mike, because I see you um, using Mole Skinny all the time, your little notebooks and in the videos that I've seen you creating with your courses. Um, so I just thought that you'd be doing your live stuff and everything with Moleskine um, books, not not so much the iPad. So I did, I've learned something new today. Yeah, that's it's been a recent shift. I think whenever the iPad, I think the one I, that I see you have is very similar to the one I started with, the 9.7. Yeah. That was sort of the watershed moment because I had tried in the past when, so I bought one of the first iPads and it just was not the quality wasn't up to what I needed. Like I could never get the points. Like even if I could use really fine pens and they could even correct my line, which I kind of don't like, the styluses were always really so rudimentary. Even the Paper 53 stylus from the past, which you can still dig up, was pretty good. But it still, I just felt like it. things just didn't uh, line up right. And when the iPad Pro came out and I got a chance to test it, that's when I knew, okay, all the pieces are now in place where I can make this work. And from there, that's just become part of the toolkit. I don't exclusively work on it. I work on it a fair amount, and it's got its benefits. But as I said, I like I like mixing up paper. And, you know, for a long time, I used Moleskine um, as well. And then, you know, now that I've done the Kickstarter, I've got my own notebook, which is exactly what I want. <laughs> so that, that really helps, you know? That's brilliant. So, that's really fascinating to hear your 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 selection of tools and that you're a note shelf person. I like note shelf as well. And now we want to I want to switch to uh, the three tips portion. So I wanted to mix this up a little bit since you're new to sketch noting. I thought it would be really interesting to have you share the three things you would sh would have shared with yourself 3 or 6 months ago um, as far as tips go, three tips that you might share with your past self that you've learned. Uh, since you've begun sketchnoting. Okay, so the because I am quite fresh, even though I submerged myself in the whole thing, um, my challenges are still very fresh in my mind of what, the, what barriers of entry mm -hmm. could potentially mm -hmm. be for someone. 
And even in my conversations, when I'm, you know, banging on about how fantastic sketch noting is, there is a challenge that comes to the fore and that is drawing. Hmm. Um, so my three tips are based around drawing. And I touched upon this a little bit earlier in the conversation, you know, about concept of art and what art means. And um, mm-hmm. the first thing that I would say is if you can doodle and if you can write, then you can draw the hmm. same way you had to practice to learn how to write your name is the same way that you will need to practice to create drawings that you will like, or at least halfway like. Mm -hmm. That's the first tip. The second tip is don't get too caught up about drawing. (laughs) And I I know that might sound um, easier said than done. And for someone like myself, I'm, I'm, if I wasn't so enthusiastic, I would definitely be a perfectionist, but I've got too much enthusiasm to be one. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I do like having a very, very high standard when I do things. So then change the mindset so that you can approach it in a way that is enjoyable for your personality type. And I say this for mm. just about any challenge that you might face. So then make doodling part of something that you do even if it's absent-mindedly so Mm. if you don't like the way you draw noses while you're watching telly or doing something Mm -hmm. else have your sheet of paper it can be copy paper You, you can chuck it away afterwards just draw noses the whole sheet full of noses Mm-hmm. Just draw eyes, the whole thing full of eyes, if that's what you want to practice on. If you think that your stick man doesn't stand up or stick person doesn't stand up or sit down or show expression the way you would like them to, then practice that all the time. I'm I'm a huge fan of Agatha Christie TV shows. So mm. I'll be sitting down watching Poirot and I'll be doing stick men, stick men, stick men, stick mm-hmm. men. Mm-hmm. Or I might be doing eyes. Um, or something else that I'm not quite happy about. And then I'm getting my practice in without Mm. even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not about getting the perfect image. It's about practicing. So the, the focus isn't perfection. The focus is on fitting in or making time to practice on something you would like to see improvement on. And I would say my last tip, is to think of something that you really enjoy doing that you would like to communicate to somebody else Mm. and make that be a sketch note that you either finish in one sitting or you don't finish in one sitting, but it can be just something you enjoy doing. And you probably notice that enjoying the process is is something that I return to over and over. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so important to enjoy these things. I mean, it it can take your note taking from something that is really boring, mundane, something you just have to do because you want to finish the course into being something that's really enjoyable and keeps you stimulated about the subject that you're learning because of the technique that you're using. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, it's definitely sketch noting, which I absolutely love. Then they Um, feed each other. Yes, they do. They do. For for a lifelong learner like me, who's been using mind maps intermittently for about 20 years, this for me is like a step up. And Mm. and that doesn't mean for another mind map, it's a step up it just for my personality type Mm -hmm. it's a step up so it's just another way that I can embrace learning and enjoy learning and I can explain things to people even Mm. my um, my eldest son we were having a conversation about dealing with different emotions and if somebody is having anger issues but also has problems with um, being assertive but the anger is really huge and the 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 issue with being assertive is small then maybe tackle that when I was able to draw it It, Mm. and I wouldn't have done that this time last year I would have just used Mm. words out of my mouth (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so yeah just find ways that you can apply it 
that is enjoyable and you will just fly. That's that's my advice. Mm. Well, that's, th- those are three great tips. Thank you for sharing those with us. And whether you're new to sketchnoting or you're an old seasoned grizzled veteran like me, you can take some knowledge from that. I think there's always opportunities to learn. I love the term lifelong learner because it's really what you are. Um, whether you like it or not, you know, um, maybe you're, you're a bad lifelong learner. This is your opportunity to be a better one. So thank you for, for sharing those with us. My pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about um, how people can reach out to you. It sounds like you do lots of things. I can imagine as people are listening, maybe they have interest in one or the other of your many activities and would just like to get to know you and be in contact um, now that you're, you know, you're part of our sketchnoting community. Um, what's the best way to reach you? Are there websites? Are you on social media? Let us know those those ways. Yeah, sure. Um, I have a website called Mother of Abundance mm. and all of my, you can find all of my, um, my like my Twitter handle is there. My Instagram mm-hmm. is there. Facebook is there. Um, if you just go to motherofabundance.com. Um, also, I'm on LinkedIn and I'm there mm. as Zena Gooding Broderick. If you search for me, you'll I'll, I'm, I'm quite active on LinkedIn as well. Mm. So those mm. two places, you'll more or less get every kind of way to connect with me um, from those two spaces. Okay. And then you, you two can experience the fire hose that is Zena <laughs> <laughs> and her passion, which is awesome. I love it. <laughs> Well, Zena, thank you for being on the show. It's been so much a pleasure to spend time with you and learn from you and hear your experience. Um, thank you for making time to be on the show. It's been really great to have you. I have loved this and I've told everybody I'm going to be on this show because I'm awesome. such a huge fan of yours, Mike. Um, so yes, the pleasure is all mine and thank you so much for inviting me onto the show. It's been wonderful. Well, that's great. And for everyone listening, that'll wrap the show. And until the next episode of the Sketchnote Army podcast, we'll talk to you soon. The Sketchnote Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rohde, and brought to you by Rohde Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of the show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code ROADY40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show.